In this video, I'm going to explain about the VPLS architecture. A VPLS service emulates a LAN or the functionality of an Ethernet switch. An Ethernet switch has the following characteristics. First, forwarding of Ethernet frames. Forwarding of unicast frames with an unknown destination MAC address. You know that in Ethernet switch, when we receive Ethernet frame with unknown destination MAC address, we will flood it or Ethernet switch will flood it okay, to all other port ports except the receiving ports. After that, replication of broadcast and multicast frames to more than one port and then loop prevention with STP and then dynamic learning of MAC addresses. And finally, MAC address aging. We have learned about all of these functions in CCNA course, and they are the behavior of the Ethernet switch, normal Ethernet switch. VPLS should also have these characteristics. You know that VPLS emulates the Ethernet switch in uh, over the actually MPLS or service providers pro provider providing MPLS service. Okay, actually VPLS is a logical layer two switch or actually Ethernet switch between the sites of one customer, okay, in the simplest form. Ethernet frames receive two MPLS label before they are forwarded across the MPLS backbone. You learn about the any transport over MPLS or ATOM in previous courses. And here we have the similar condition. In ATOM, we will add two label to a frame. First, the top label is the label for receive for reaching to the actually next PE. And after that, we have VC label or pseudo wire label. This forwarding of Ethernet frames is the same as in the any transport over MPLS in VPLS. An imposed virtual circuit or VC label always serves as a demultiplexing label and indicate the VC that the frames belongs to. The tunnel label is the top label that indicate how the frame is forwarded from the ingress to the okay, ingress P to the egress P rotor. You will learn about all of them. Now here we are reviewing them. If the P rotor, for example, this rotor, receives a frame that has an unknown destination MAC address, the frame is replicated and forwarded to all ports belong to the uh, to that LAN segment. For example, it will forward to the other sites of the customer one like the uh, for example normal normal ethernet switch assume that here we have a normal ethernet switch we receive unknown destination mac address frame and after that it should flood it to other interfaces other ports uh, except the receiving interface okay the lan segment on an ethernet switch might be a collection of ports belonging to the same vlan when configuring VPLS, you must specify which VPLS instance a particular port or VLAN belongs to. The frames with unknown destination MAC address are forwarded to all ports belonging to that VPLS instance. On a true Ethernet switch, the port would just be a physical interface. However, with VPLS, it might be a physical interface, but it could also be a pseudo wire to another P router. Look at this figure, which shows the uh, P routers involved with the VPLS instance named a uh, customer one. Here we have a VPLS instance with the name of customer one for one customer. The customer has several sites, all of which are connected to a P router, as you can see here. The P router have pseudo wires between them to carry the Ethernet frames. Each pseudo wire consists of two label switch paths or LSP, one for each direction. Okay, like the any transport over uh, MPLS. If the CE rotor, for example, this rotor or switch like this uh, site, okay, sends a broadcast frame to the PE rotor, the frame is replicated and forwarded to all physical ports on that PE, okay, means for example here, uh, belonging to that VPLS instance, but also to all pseudo wires associated with that VPLS instance, means to these two sites. Okay, multicast frames are replicated and forwarded to all physical ports that are part of the multicast group. 
and to also the wires the underlying van ports okay when forwarding broadcast frames it is important to flood the frame throughout the broadcast domain if the PE router are not fully meshed for one VPLS instance, okay, here it is fully meshed, okay, a spanning tree protocol is required to keep the layer two topology loop free. I will explain them in future. However, a simpler mechanism was chosen to keep the forwarding free of loops. The PE routers, okay, need to be in a full mesh, as you can see here, of pseudo wires, and the PE router perform a split horizon in layer two forwarding it means that a split horizon here means that a flooded frame that is received on one pseudo wire will never be forwarded to other pseudo wire assume that here we have a broadcast from this ce this p should forward it to these two pseudo wire to each of these two sides but when one p receives the, pseudo, the broadcast it doesn't forward it to other uh, for example vpls sites or for a other sites of customer because of that here we don't experience a loop okay a split horizon is on by default okay you can turn it off if needed i will explain them in future as with ethernet switch the p routers of the vpls network should perform a mac address learning and aging like the normal ethernet switch this means that the P routers will notice the source address of received frames and associate them with the physical port or pseudo wire. For example, if in this P router we receive a frame with a source MAC address, here it, this P will learn the source MAC address of that frame on this interface. Also, if this P receives the frame from this pseudo wire, it will learn the pseudo wire as the logical interface uh, for uh, about that MAC address. Okay, we will see them. After that, uh, this means that the P router will notice the source of address of received frame and associate them with a physical port or pseudo wire. Similar to an Ethernet switch, the MAC address are aged out after a certain period of not receiving a frame from that MAC address, like the normal switch. The aging time is refreshed after receiving, re receiving a frame. It means that in VPLS, we have all of these functions. Forwarding of Ethernet frame. When a P receives this a frame according to the destination MAC address, okay, and uh, it should be, uh, for example, encapsulated with two label and forward to the uh, actually VPLS, uh, other VPLS uh, instance sites. About the forwarding of Unicast frame with an unknown destination MAC address, again, we have similar condition, flooding the frame, replication of broadcast and multicast frames to more than one port, a port. Again, here we have similar condition, a loop prevention. I explained when with 1P received a broadcast frame or a frame, it doesn't forward it to the, for, over the pseudo wire, it doesn't forward it over other pseudo wire because of that here, we will not uh, any loop uh, this is the uh, split horizon of the uh, for example vpls but if you don't have full mesh of connection you need to have to enable a, a spanning tree i will explain the spanning tree in future videos after that dynamic learning of mac address it, it is same as the normal switch in the p router and finally we have mac address aging because of that now without any detail or talking about the detail of all of these functions, we know that emulated Ethernet switch with MPLS is working like the physical Ethernet switch that we have used in our, for example, campus networks. We will learn about each of them with some examples in future videos.